In the first week of Advent, we light the candle of hope, or the prophecy candle. From Isaiah chapter 9, verses 2 and 6. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. For a child has been born to us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace.
holy night when God as man descended unto us to erase the stain of sin and put an end to wrath. The entire world thrills with hope on this night that gives it a savior. My people, kneel down and await your deliverance. For Christ has come, the Redeemer is here. May the ardent light of our faith guide us all to the cradle of the infant. As in ancient times, a brilliant star guided kings from the east. The King of Kings was born in a humble manger. He has broken every bond. The earth is free and heaven is open. He sees a brother where there was only a slave. His love unites those that iron had chained. Who will tell him of our gratitude? For all of us, he is born. For all of us, he suffers and dies. And for all of us, he lives again. My people, stand up. Sing of your deliverance. Shout for joy and sing praise to the Redeemer. This holy night, this night divine, come and praise his name forever. His power and glory evermore proclaim. Good morning, I'm Andrina Johnson, and these are your announcements for Sunday, December 1st, 2024. St. John Baptist Church, our mission is the Great Commission. Matthew chapter 28, verses 19 and 20. Evangelize the lost, equip disciples, extend compassion. You're invited. Please join us each Sunday morning for Sunday School 9 to 9.45 a.m. We have in place for you seven face-to-face -face Sunday school classes available. Adult class, couples class, young adults, teenagers, preteens, and primary age. And everyone is welcome. Advent week one, hope. Therefore, the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. Isaiah chapter seven, verse 14. St. John Baptist Church Sunday School Department presents a Christmas musical, A Night in Bethlehem. They worshiped him. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. We shall perform Sunday, December 15th, 2024 at 9 a.m. Rehearsal dates and times are as follows. December 7th and 14th, 11 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. in the sanctuary. Thank you. From the bottom of my heart, I would like to thank you for your gift and for sharing in the celebration of my birthday. I felt the love and sincerity all around me, which made my 80th birthday that much more memorable. With all my love, Mary F. Corley. From the media ministry, you are important to us. Help us keep our database current. 
Share with us your email address by completing the online church membership form found on the website so that you may receive messages from our pastor and our church office. Also, if you have moved and have a new address and phone number, please contact the church office. Thank you. Visit us at www.stjohnbaptistchurch1900.com. And don't forget, complete the church membership form. St. John Baptist Church Sunday morning announcements. Volunteer to read and record the church announcements for Sunday mornings. Please contact Deacon Virgil Wallace at St. John Media Ministry at gmail.com. Sign up at the church welcome desk. We need you. Need health coverage? Join us for this important event to learn more about Health Insurance Marketplace. You can find covers that fits your budget and meets your needs. If you're uninsured, recently lost coverage, or just want to learn about your choices, we can help you explore coverage that is right for you through the Marketplace. Open enrollment, November 1st, 2024 to January 15th, 2025. Contact Robin Bass at 803-386-1109 or Bernadine Cobb at 803-542-9527 or online at Health Navigator at St. John Baptist Church 1900.org. South Carolina African American History Calendar 2024. The honoree of the month of December is Wilhelmina P. Johnson. Mrs. Johnson was named South Carolina Consumer Education Teacher of the Year. She served on Darlington County Council for over two decades, including as its chairperson. She was the founder of the Darlington County Cultural Realism Center, which hosted the annual statewide talented teen competition for over 30 years. She was featured as the hero of the day on CBS Morning News. She received a prestigious achievement award from the governor's office on women. Mrs. Johnson is a graduate from South Carolina State University. Congratulations to our civic leader, Wilhelmina P. Johnson, honoree for the month of December. Happy birthday, four score members, for the month of December. December has December 7th, Albert Lee. December 29th, Willie Green. This is from the pastor and the St. John family. Best wishes to all of those who are celebrating a birthday this month. Weekly Bible verse, hope for the Savior. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. Remember, St. John, to visit our website at www.stjohnbaptistchurch1900.com and find us on Facebook for additional announcements. Thank you and have a wonderful week. Good morning, St. John. 
Can we give the Lord a hand clap of praise? Amen. Stand up for God. Yeah. We want to welcome you for yet another communion Sunday. Uh, God has allowed us to uh, 30 days up until this point. So that in and of itself is a blessing. First of all, we want to thank uh, Miss Adrena Johnson for the announcement. She did a marvelous job. Yeah. Wanted to go over a few things uh, before we enter into worship. Uh, once again, our giving options, uh, the envelope system, trustees in the vestibule, as well as online. Uh, also want to remind everyone of our prayer line, which is 803-573-0268. And for further information, visit our website at uh, St. John Baptist Church, 1900. Uh, dot com. And I'm telling you, I'm proud of our website. I'm sorry, I don't know about anybody else here, but I'm proud of our website. We got a great website. And if you want to know all about St. John, uh, go to our website. It's some very important and uh, valuable information. So uh, as we enter into worship, Nehemiah 9, verse 5 through 6 reminds us, stand up and bless the Lord your God forever and ever. Blessed be your glorious name, which is exalted above all blessing and praise. You alone are the Lord. You have made heaven, the heaven of heavens, with all their hosts, the earth and everything on it, the seas and all that is in them, and you preserve them all. The host of heavens worship you. Now we will have our invocation by Minister Victor Rogers. Let us pray. Okay. Lord, we thank you for this month of December. We remember the reason for the season, which is Jesus. Lord, we just want to thank you for sending Jesus. Lord, we also thank you for keeping us warm on a cold night. We pray for those that had no shelter but endure the cold weather so that they may cease warmth and shelter, Lord. We ask you, Lord, that you continue to be a healer, Lord. We know that by your stripes we are healed, Lord. Heal those who are sick, Lord. Heal those who are in bereavement right now, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for this church on the corner of Farrow and Beltline in the midst of the Booker Washington Heights community, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for our members, Lord who braved the cold weather to come out this morning. We thank you, Lord, for our doorkeepers, the usher, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for our stewards, the trustee, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for our leaders, the deacons, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for our musicians who brings beautiful harmonic praises to us, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for the ministers, Lord, who are here in the midst. And most of all, Lord, we thank you for our pastor, the shepherd of this church. And we just want to say, Lord, we thank you we thank you, Lord, for Jesus who died for our sins so that we can live again. And as we take community, communion this morning, Lord, let us remember Jesus who gave his body and his blood so that we can be saved. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We will now have selection from our choir. And uh, during the second selection, we'll be passing uh, the offering plate around. So uh, in that order, please. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, Praise the Lord everybody. Hallelujah. We made it through to the first Sunday in the month of December. And we owe God praise. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. We invite you to stand with us as we sing our opening hymn this morning. Oh, come, let us adore him, for he is Christ the Lord.
Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we are so thankful for being here today. Lord, you have been so good to us. You've been better to us than we've been to ourselves. Lord, we thank you for keeping us over these holidays. Some of us traveling miles. And you kept us. Allowed us to be back again today. Now, Lord, we ask you to bless this offering that your children have given back to you. Bless each and every heart that gave, Lord, because you said in your word that you love a cheerful giver. So bless them, Lord. Bless those who had a desire to give but didn't have it this time. Bless them so that next time they'll be able to share with you. Lord, we ask that you would bless our homes. Bless each and every one who has given today. Bless those, bless those who gave above and beyond. Bless them and increase ten, hundredfold. Bless them today. Then, Lord, we ask you to bless this church that sits on this hill, that blesses the community by giving out food, we ask you to bless this church in a special way. These blessings we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, amen and amen.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Clap your hands and praise him. How many of you have a confident hope in him? Hallelujah. Our hope is in him. A confident hope in the everlasting God. He's a great God. He's a mighty God. He's the Prince of Peace. He's the everlasting Father. He is the great I Am. And yes, we put our hope and our trust in Him today. Amen? And as we begin this uh, Advent season, uh, we start with the theme of hope on this morning. Amen? And we praise God for not this only the first Sunday of Advent, but the first Sunday of December. It is Communion Sunday as we come together and unite as one body in Christ. There is a word from the Lord. We certainly want to thank uh, Minister Patterson for leading us today, uh, along with Minister Rogers, amen, and all of our ministers. And we give honor to our deacons, deaconesses, first ladies, Graham, ministers, wives, husbands, to all of our brothers and sisters in the Lord Jesus Christ, to the media ministry, to the choirs, the musicians, the member of saints, visiting friends, to those on, media, on social media, we greet you at this hour in the mighty name of Jesus. And there is a word from the Lord. But before we get into the word, I want to thank young, young Fleshman who's here um, from college. I want to ask all of our college students to stand. You didn't have to come, but you did, and we want to thank you. We want to thank you for coming and sharing. Amen. Amen for being here in the house. Amen. After Thanksgiving and the first Sunday, we praise God for each and every one of you. Amen. There is a word from the Lord uh, on this first Sunday of Advent. Luke chapter 21, verses 25 through 28. Luke chapter 21, verses 25 through 28, reading from the New King James Version. And there will be signs in the sun. It will be darkened. In the moon, it will not give its light. And in the stars, they sh will fall from heaven. And on the earth, the stress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring, men's heart failing them from fear and expectation of those things which are coming on the earth, for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. And then, somebody say then. Yes. Then they shall see the Son of Man coming in the cloud with power and great glory. Now, when these things begin to happen, look up and lift up your heads, because your redemption draws near. Amen. From these words will come our message. If you, in this message, this theme from, for the message today is anxious about life, hope in the Lord. Anxious about life, hope in the Lord. And that word hope is another word for expectation. And so that sub-theme is expect Christ to come to your aid. Expect Christ to come to your aid. Anxiety is the buzzword of the day. The troubles of this world has caused so many to be full of anxiety and despair, but hope in the Lord can help you overcome the world. Somebody say hope. Jesus said these days would come and it would cause many to lose heart and lose hope. But he also said you can expect him to come to rescue you. How do you overcome anxiety? How do you keep yourself from being overwhelmed with the troubles of this world? You must have hope. You must have hope. You must expect Christ to come and make things better. You see, hope is another word for expectation of the favorable future. Hope is expectation of a better day, a better way. Hope is the expectation of peace and deliverance from the Lord. 
This message is tailored to teach you today that don't, you don't have to let anxieties and stresses of, of this troubled world get the best of you. You can expect Christ to come to your aid. You can expect Christ to come to your rescue. This Advent season reminds us that despite the darkness, we have hope in the light of life. We have hope in, the, in Jesus the Christ. Yes, Advent encourages us to hope in the Christ who promised to come see about us, who promised to come deliver us, who promised to come and redeem us. Somebody say hope. Somebody say hope is expecting Christ to come. Yes, it is expecting Christ to come. We know that the first advent, in the first advent, the people of God hope, had hope in the coming of the Christ child, in the coming of the Messiah, who was to bring salvation into the world. And guess what? He came. And now Jesus, in our text today, is speaking to the chosen twelve, and he's speaking to the, the chosen saints, us, to warn us of the coming trials and tribulations and troubles of this world. But he also encourages us to expect him to come and into our rescue, come and to our aid. Yes, he, expects, he wants us to expect him to come see about us. He says, trouble will come and people will get anxious and people will be worried and full of anxiety but don't get stuck on anxiety. Don't get stuck in despair when you can expect Jesus to come and rescue you. You see, just because you're saved does not mean that you won't experience troubles and trials. Just because you're saved, it doesn't mean that you won't experience difficulty and hard times. But it does mean that you can endure your troubles for the, with the hope in the living Lord. Jesus did not leave his disciples blind when it came to sufferings and struggles. He didn't leave his disciples blind when it came to troubles and trials. Before going to Calvary and suffering for the sins of this world, Jesus shares future trials, future troubles, future tribulations with his disciples. Jesus does not stop with trouble. It's what I like about this text. Jesus does not stop with the troubles of this world. Jesus does not stop with anxiety about life. Jesus ends on a note of hope. He ends with expectation of his coming, rescue of his coming, a deliverance, saying, then. Then is the most important word in this text. Then you, look at what he says, you will see darkness. And then the light, of, the light will come. You will see troubles in this world, and then peace will reign. You will see nations in distress, and then the Son of Man will come with power. You, in other words, there will be troubles and trials and tribulations, but that's not the end of the story. You can expect a then. You can expect a great outcome. Yes, you just have to keep hope in the Lord. Jesus does not dismiss dark times. No, no. He says in Luke 21 that the temple will be destroyed. Dark times. There will be false prophets coming in and, and saying that they're Christ and they're not the Christ. Dark times. Their saints will be persecuted and hated by the world. Dark times. Jerusalem will be destroyed. Dark times. As if that was not enough, men's heart will fail them for fear of the coming of what's coming on the earth. Dark times. And finally, the powers of heaven will be shaken. Dark times. But that's not the end. Jesus said, you can expect him to show up and show out. Somebody say he'll show up. And he'll show out. So don't settle for dark times. Hope in the Lord. Expect a breakthrough. Expect a miracle. Expect deliverance. Expect Christ to come to your rescue. So don't stop at troubles. Don't stop at the troubles of this world. Look for the then. 
Look for the then. It's right there in chapter what, 21. Luke chapter 21, verses 27 and 28. Then shall, shall then they shall see the Son of Man coming in the cloud with great power and glory. Now when these things begin to happen, look up and lift up your heads because your redemption draws near. Don't be anxious, but expect redemption. Don't be anxious, but expect deliverance. Don't be anxious, but expect a breakthrough. Expect the then. There are three things Jesus wants us to see and expect in the midst of these dark times. He wants us to expect three things here. Number one, when problems come, expect Jesus to show up with great power. Yes, you're going to have problems. Problems in the heavens. Problems in nature. Problems among the nations. Problems in the atmosphere. But when and whatever the problem, Jesus will show up with great power. Look at it there. Verse 27. Jesus promised, the Son of Man will come in the cloud with great power. Notice, he's in the cloud with great power. Clouds are above you. Clouds are above. Aren't you glad that Jesus has power above your problems? He has problem. He has power over your storms, power over your trials, over your troubles, over your tribulations. He's got power. Look at the good news in the text. After the tribulation. After darkness sets in, after storms of life raised, after the devil has given his best shot to try to take you out, then you shall see the Son of Man coming in the cloud with great power. Then you shall see him stepping onto your cloud. Stepping above your storm, above your mess, above your struggles. Aren't you glad that Jesus is a storm rider? Yes, aren't you glad that he's not only a storm rider, but he's above, he's above your anxiety, above your problems, above your storm. To do what? To solve your problems. He's coming into your cloud, into the cloud to solve your problem, soothe your doubts, calm your fears. Songwriter said, God moves in a mysterious way. His wonders to perform. He plants his footsteps on the sea and he rides upon every storm. Jesus is coming back on a cloud. Jesus will ride on your cloud. I don't know how dark your, the clouds are in your life, but don't worry. Jesus is riding on them. Jesus is above them. Jesus is controlling them right now. Won't he calm your storm? I'm reminded of Jesus in Mark chapter 4, verse 35, 39. The disciples out there on the storm-tossed sea while Jesus is in the same boat, asleep on a pillow. They came to the master saying, Master, Master, don't you care that we are perishing? Jesus got up, wiped the sleep from his, from his eyes, got over to the side of the boat, and he says, Peace, be still. And that's what Jesus is saying to you right now. Peace, be still. Won't Jesus, the cloud rider, the storm calmer, the problem solver, won't he calm your storms? I don't know what you're going through, but Jesus is above your situation right now. Jesus is on top of your problems right now. Jesus is speaking peace to your troubled home, your troubled family, your troubled marriage right now. Jesus is speaking peace to that troubled job, that troubled finance, that trouble in your life right now. Yes. Bible says he's coming on a cloud with great power. He's got power over your addiction, power over your burdens, power over your confusion, power over your depression, power over your enemies. He's got power over your finances, power over your grief. He's got power over your hardships. Power over your issues, power over your jealousy. 
from A to Z, he's got power over it. Expect him. Expect him to come with great power. That's the kind of God we serve. He's a God of power. Somebody say yes. yes. Number two, when darkness covers your world, expect Jesus to shine his light of glory in your life. Jesus said, after darkness comes in your life, after the sun refuses to shine, after the moon no longer gives light, after all the glory of heavens are shaken, guess what? Then you shall see the Son of Man coming in the cloud with great glory, glory, glory. He's going to illuminate. He's going to dispel the darkness in your life. What is he coming with glory for? To push back the darkness in your life. Think about it. Death in a family, death in the family can leave you in a dark place. Somebody doing you wrong can lead you in a dark and leave you in a dark place. Depression, despair can leave you in a dark place. But Jesus promised to come to your aid. Jesus promised to brighten your day. Jesus promised to bring light of hope into your life. That's good news. Though darkness brings doom and gloom, though darkness brings death and destruction, though darkness sometimes brings suffering and sorrow, his glory will bring you light. Though darkness creates chaos and confusion in your life, but his glory will bring you light. Though darkness creates crime and corruption, depression and despair, his glory will bring you light. Just look, just like God pushed back the darkness in the beginning when he said, let there be light. Yes. And there was light. Darkness had to what? Had to go. Jesus, his, in his glory, will push back the darkness in your life. He'll push back your depression. He'll push back your despair. He'll push back your doubts and your fears, your problems and your pain. The Bible says, be anxious for nothing, but pray about everything. Jesus can push back anxiety from your life. Aren't you glad that his glory will push back the darkness out of your life? If I were you today, I would expect Jesus, the hope of glory, to come see about me. Expectation is faith, is hope, is knowing that God is going to come see about me. Why? Because his glory will push back despair and bring you hope. His glory will push back confusion and bring you peace. His glory will push back disorder and bring order in your life. His glory will push back sadness and bring you joy. His glory will push back sin and bring you salvation. His glory will push back sickness and bring you healing. His glory will push back death, defeat, and bring you victory. Somebody say, come glory, come glory. You ought to come glory because God will push back fear and bring faith in your life. His glory will push back death and bring, me, bring you life. It will push back darkness and bring you life. This is why we expect Jesus to show up because Jesus, the light of the world, well, he will not let darkness settle in your life. No, no, he won't have, he, he won't have, uh, have you to live in despair. He won't have you to live in defeat or fear. No, no, the songwriter said we're walking in the light, beautiful light. Come where the dew drops, our mercies are bright. Shine all around us by day and by night. Jesus is the light of the world. Are you walking in that light? Are you stepping into that light? Are you enjoying that light? Are you rejoicing about that light? Somebody say, expect Jesus 
to show up and show out. Finally, when the storms of life are raging, when anxiety is trying to take you out, you can expect Jesus to come to your rescue. Don't you see there the rescue and power of Jesus in the text? Jesus said, you can expect the fierceness, of, the fierce storms in your life. You can expect the contrary winds in your life. But don't worry. You don't, don't, don't worry. You won't be lost. No, no. You cannot, hallelujah, you cannot be driven out of my reach. Isn't that good news? That wherever the storm try to, try to blow you, hallelujah, you won't be blown out of his reach. In fact, if you're anchored in him, you won't get blown away. Amen. Somebody say yes. yes. Verse 28 says, now when these things begin to happen, look up. Lift up your heads because your redemption draws near. I will rescue you from the storms of life. Mark chapter 13, verse 27, a parallel to Luke 21. Jesus said this, Then I will send the angel, my angels to gather you and rescue you from the four winds from the storms, from the uttermost parts of the world. Why, this is why you must expect to be rescued because Jesus promised in his word that he will rescue you. And you got to trust his word. You got to take him at his word. You got to depend on his word. You got to lean on his word. Hallelujah. Saints, you do not belong out there by yourself. That's why it's good to be a part of the family of God. You don't belong out there by yourself. You're members of the body of Christ. We belong together. We are supposed to be together. The pandemic might have scattered many of us, but we belong together. The devil wants to keep you divided, but we belong together. Jesus is restoring our fellowship. Jesus is bringing us back together. So that what? Our hope can be renewed. So that our joy can be restored. So that our faith can increase with the power of the word of God. Somebody ought to say yes. yes. Oh, there's something about being restored back together. It's, it was Jesus who said in Matthew 18, 20, where two or three of my believers are gathered together in my name, there I am in the midst. When Jesus is in the midst, joy is in the midst. When Jesus is in the midst, hope and healing is in the midst. When Jesus is in the midst, peace and power is in the midst. When Jesus is in the midst, victory and deliverance is in the midst. That's why it's good to be in the fellowship so that you can feel the presence of the power of Jesus, so that you can be restored by the hope of Jesus so that you can be restored by the joy of Jesus so that you can build your faith so that you can overcome the world. This is our expectation. This is our hope that he will one day rescue us from this present evil world and bring us together in him. Hallelujah. And in that day, there will be no more insiders and outsiders. There will be no more rich and poor. There will be no more haves and have-nots. There will be no more black and white. There will be no more Jew or Gentile. There will be no more Protestant and Catholic. In that day, there will be no more bound and free, no more female or male, but Christ will be all in all. He'll gather us as one body. He'll gather us as one spirit. He'll gather us as one hope of our calling, as one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of us all. He will gather us. Yes, he will. This is our hope. This is our advent. This is what we expect for him to come, for Christ to come with his power, for Christ to come and shine out of darkness, for Christ to come and rescue us. This is what keeps us going. 
This is what keeps that great expectation of his coming. It keeps us going. Hallelujah. Do you have your hope in the Lord? Is your hope in God? I can say like the songwriter, my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ, on Christ, on Christ, the solid rock I stand, all of the ground is sinking sand. All of the ground is sinking sand. Are you standing on the rock? Are you trusting in Jesus? Do you know he'll come see about you? Do you know he will come to your aid? Do you know he'll come to your rescue? I don't know about you, but he's done it so many times before. And if he did it before, he can do it again. Yes, he can. Anxious about life? Hope in the Lord. Keep your trust in the Lord. Keep your anchor in the rock of our salvation. Keep your hope in the Lord. And guess what? You'll see another day. You'll see a brighter day. You'll see a better day if you hope in the Lord. David said, I would have fainted. I would have lost my mind. I would have given up and fallen dead had I not believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Amen. Hope in the Lord. Hope in his goodness. And God will see you through. God will bring you out. God will rescue you. Whatever you're going through, whatever pain you have in your body, whatever sickness you have right now, God is a healer. Keep hope alive. Keep trusting in the Lord. Keep trusting in the one who is a healer. He was wounded for your transgressions, bruised for your iniquity. The chastisement of your peace was upon him. And by his stripes, you are healed. As we stand to our feet, there may be someone out of the ark of safety. No God on your side, no heaven in your view. Maybe you came full of anxiety stress. Will you come? Will you accept and receive him right now? It's your opportunity. If you step out, one of St. John will step out with you. Don't let this moment pass you by. Trust him. Believe him. Receive him. Accept him as your Lord and your Savior. Will you come today? If you step out, one of St. John will step out with you. Don't let this moment pass you by. Jesus loves you. He cares about you. He's going to bless you. He wants to save you. He wants to set you free. Will you come today? Hallelujah. He says, Behold, I stand at your heart's door and I'm knocking. If any man will hear my voice, open the door. I'll come in. Have sup with him. He with me. I with thee. Will you come today? Oh, yes. For those of you who desire prayer, will you come that we might pray the prayer of faith together? Our God is able to do exceedingly abundantly over and above all that we could ever ask, think, or even imagine of him. Our God is able. Oh, yeah. Will you trust him today? Maybe you want to stand in the gap for somebody else. It's your opportunity. Perhaps you're on social media and you need the Lord in your life. Just call that number. 
call that number so that we might pray the prayer of faith that you might receive him as your Lord and your Savior. Let us pray. Oh God, our help in ages past, our hope for years to come, our shelter from the stormy blast, and yes, you are our eternal home. We come, dear God, in the mighty name of thy son, Jesus. Some are standing in the need of one thing and some are standing in the need of another. But we know, God, you have 10,000 blessings in your hands just to satisfy us all. And so we ask, God, that you would touch those who are sick. Let your blood cover from the crown of their head to the sole of their feet. We know there's power in your blood. Healing and deliverance in your blood. Let your blood cover. Cast out the affliction that's plaguing their bodies even now, God. We think that even as we speak, you're moving by your power. You're pulling down that high blood, regulating that diabetes. You're drying up that cancer, easing that pain. You're soothing that scorching fever. And God, we just want to tell you, thank you. Thank you that you were wounded for their transgressions, bruised for their iniquities. The chastisement of their peace was upon you, and by your stripes, they are healed. So we decree and declare healing over their lives right now. We thank you, dear God, that your name is above every name. Your name is above cancer and COVID, high blood pressure, hypertension. Your name is above every stroke, every heart attack. Your name is above heart disease and kidney disease. Your name is above depression. We thank you, dear God, that you're healing even as we speak. Then, Father, we pray for those who are lost, those who are lost in a world of sin. Lord, we ask that you would help them to repent of their sins, believe in their heart, confess with their mouth that God has raised you from the dead and confess that you are Lord of their life. No way fans of us about it, but they shall be saved. Saved to the utmost. Save our sons and daughters. Save our mothers and fathers. Save our sisters and our brothers. Save husbands and wives. Lord, have your way right now. In the name of Jesus. Lord, send us revival. Revive our souls. Renew our strength. Restore our joy. Lord, have your way, Lord. Then, Father, we pray for those who are in a financial bind. Open that door to that new job, that new promotion, that new opportunity. Shut the door of poverty, disappointment, and discouragement. We know you can open doors that no man can shut. You can shut doors that no man can open. And God, we just want to tell you thank you. Thank you. Father, we pray for those who have trouble in their homes, trouble in their marriage. Lord, we just pray for restoration. We pray for forgiveness. We pray, God, that you would reconcile, that you would bring back together what has been broken. Have your way in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray for leaders of our nations down to the mayor of our city. Give them a mind to make right decisions that we might lead a quiet and a peaceful life. We pray for St. John. Touch every member, name by name and one by one. Those who are here in our presence. Those on social media. Those, dear God, who are away. Have your way right now. Strengthen, save, heal, deliver. Bring us together. Give us the power to look beyond each other's fault. See each other's needs and meet those needs. It's in Jesus' name we do pray. We count it done. We claim the victory. And we say amen, 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 amen. and amen. amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It is communion time. It is communion time. If you do not have a communion packet, please raise your hand so the ushers will get one to you.
Hallelujah. As we go into our communion service, our Lord's Supper, we will do responsive reading Matthew chapter 26, verses 26 to 28. I will read the first, you'll read the second, and we'll read the third together. The 26th first. And as they were eating, Jesus took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. All together, for it's this blood of the new covenant, which was shared for many for the remission of sins. Let us pray. Lord God Almighty, we come once again in the mighty name of thy son Jesus. Thank you for your awesome love, Lord God, in that you sent your only son to be crucified, to be a substitute, a sacrifice for our sins. And we ask now, we thank you, O God, for sending your son. And Lord Jesus, we thank you for giving your life. We thank you, dear God, Lord Jesus, that you were wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities, the chastisement of our peace was upon you, and by your stripes we are healed. We thank you for the shedding of your blood. We thank you for being our substitute. We most of all thank you for being our Savior. Now we ask God that you would allow this elements on this table in our hands to be changed from its natural use to its spiritual use. Allow this bread to become your body and allow this fruit of the vine, the wine to become your blood. That as we partake of your body and your blood, we may show forth your death, your burial, and your resurrection until you come again. It's in Jesus' name we do pray. We count it done and we claim the victory. And we say amen, 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 amen. and amen. amen. And Jesus took the bread, broke the bread and said, take eat, this is my body. In the same manner, he took the cup and said, Drink ye all of it, as you do for, show forth his death, burial, and resurrection until he comes again. After supper, they went out to the Mount of Olives singing a hymn. We have no mountain to go to, but we must go back down in the valley. The songwriter said, Let your light so shine. For there may be someone down in the valley trying to get home. Help us to let, let us let our light so shine as we go forth, singing a hymn of the church. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege it is to carry everything to God in prayer. Or oh, we can sing that song, a charge to keep our hair, a God to glorify. Gave his son my soul to save and fit it for the sky. To serve this present age, my calling to fulfill. Made all my powers to engage to do my master's will. As we go forth today, let us go forth in love, peace, faith, hope, and in joy. Amen. Amen. We're going to let you go. We're going to give you a few announcements and let you go. Thank you so much for this communion. As we said, stated, we pray that you had a wonderful Thanksgiving and we're now in the Advent season and we praise God for anticipating the coming of Christ and the day, today is the day of hope, and we praise God for that. Amen. Yours truly, 
Yours truly will be preaching the 125th church anniversary of Second Providence Baptist Church at 2 o'clock today in North Augusta. Uh, those who will be traveling, uh, we will be taking the bus. If you're driving, it's 1202 Edgefield Road, North Augusta. 1202 Edgefield Road, North Augusta. The bus will be leaving around 1245 so that we could get there uh, at the 2 o'clock hour. So please, if you're riding the bus, please make sure you're here before 1245. And uh, of course, on next Sunday, there will be, uh, we will be traveling to Charleston, South Carolina for the burning of the mortgage for the Bethany Baptist Church on next Sunday afternoon. But on Sunday morning, we will have another preacher in the house, and we will be here to help uh, make sure he's uh, celebrated and make sure the Lord is, is being glorified. And that is Reverend Counts. Reverend Counts is going to preach on next Sunday morning, and we appreciate him. Amen. Amen. So he's going to preach on next Sunday morning, and we will be here and leave immediately after the service to Charleston. We also will have Bible study this week coming, so we'll remember the Bible study. Also remember the Solomon uh, family and the Blunt family. Chantel Blunt's funeral was on yesterday. Brother Solomon's funeral uh, arrangements are incomplete. James, uh, Brother James Solomon, he passed on uh, yesterday, uh, the day before yesterday. I uh, just ask that you would continue to pray for the family uh, looking towards Saturday. Uh, but we will also let you know when it is confirmed. Amen? Let's pray one for another. Let's keep love on board. At this time, the Corley Hughes Clinton and Caldwell family ministry units are greeting this month. And Sister Diaz is going to recognize our honored guest. And we're going to let you go. Good morning, St. John. When your name is called, please stand until you are greeted by our pastor. We have today um, Stanley Eleazar. Stanley is visiting us for the first time, and he's a guest of Tiffany Rogers. Now, that was the only card I had, but if you did not have an opportunity to sign a guest card, please stand at this time. Okay, Stanley. <laughs> you wrote by yourself. Pastor Graham, these are our honored guests. Thank you so much, Ms. Thank Diaz. You. We want to thank you, Brother Stanley, for coming and sharing with us. And for those who did not stand and may be a guest today, we thank you so much for coming. Uh, we know you could have chosen any other place to, to worship, but you chose St. John, and we thank you for being here today. May God bless you, and may heaven smile upon you. If you care to join the church, just uh, you will see the greeters at the door, and they can tell you a little bit more about the St. John Baptist Church. Thank you so much for coming. May God bless you, and heaven smile upon you. Amen. Maybe I'll stand at this time. Maybe I'll stand. Maybe I'll stand. Blessed be the tie that binds. Blessed be the time that binds our hearts in Christian love, the fellowship of kindred mind is light to that above. Hallelujah. Witness to someone this week. Tell them about the goodness of the Lord and bring someone to church on next Sunday morning. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you peace.
shalom, health, healing, wholeness, prosperity, success, long life with satisfaction and salvation until we meet again. And we all say amen. 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 And amen. Our choir will sing us out. I'm going to greet you at the door. <laughs>